All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kurash, the bonds to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone, citations to all the pushing his word with true sincerity and with charity. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the word and he calls God and Jehovah, Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is his son's name of the word and he calls Jesus and Racha, Kurash is the Holy Spirit. As always, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites, according to the Holy Scriptures, as well as the speckled bird that scatters like foreigners scattered amongst other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of those nations to whom they've been scattered to, but whose lineage through their father's line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites no matter what your appearance may seem to be. And as always, I'm the brother Yadir from the Great Stone Branch here in Chicago, and I'm back at another lesson. It's going to be entitled Evolution Handbook, Volume 1, Master Designer. You see, and hey, this lesson is going to be inspired of this book. That they, uh, <laughs> the beloved elders from the Dallas camp uh, mentioned from time to time the evolution handbook, which basically disproves uh, the theory of evolution. You see, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. This Psalms 14 and 1 it says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the fool have said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do of good. You see, so a, a fool says that there is no heavenly father, that the heavenly father didn't create. Then it, that he is not, you see, that's what a fool will say. You see, and hey, when you get into it, we're gonna read, but just to give a quick rundown, this, this these whole theories of evolution and all this, it ultimately was uh basically a um, was a uh, rebellion against the heavenly father to 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 supposedly disprove the heavenly father. Okay, God doesn't exist. We 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 evolved from 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 nothing into something. You see. This Psalms 2 and 1, it says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointing, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And eight, the nations, the heathen nations, they want nothing to do with the heavenly father. You see, therefore, from a, from a, from early age, they indoctrinate us and uh, the whole world into believing uh, his so-called science, science falsely so-called. You see, because the true science, the true knowing of what's known is found within the scriptures. We saw Edom being a self-proclaimed white man, the left hand. He go going to tell you, hey, look, God doesn't exist. We came from a, a big ass implosion. And, and then we came from, you know, a, a common a, a damn a, a pod, some type of damn marine animal. And then we began a wall from there, which is a complete BS is it's just um, just um, ragings. To oppose the Heavenly Father. You see, and we'll go ahead and get into to this uh, book. The first, this page 16, well, I'm going to finish this off. It says, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And they will nothing to do with the Heavenly Father. It says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. You see, because ultimately the Lord <laughs> confounded all this BS via the pushing of this word. It says, mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. We're going to get into it. This 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. And what is our weapon? This word, uh, the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, the true, the truth, the breakdown of these holy scriptures. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of the most high, which what this word has done. You see, broken down all the strongholds, all the lies, all the um, theories and all the BS wisdom of this world. It says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach. You see, so hey, we're going to get into it. This page 16, and we're just going to touch on a few points. It says, um, uh, it says, premises are important. These are the concepts by which scientific facts are interpreted. For over a century, efforts have been made to explain scientific discoveries by a mid-19th century theory known as evolution. It has formed the foundation for many other theories, which also are not founded on scientific facts. You see? Uh, let me see. Yep, it says, um, restating them again, here are two premises on which the various theories of evolution are based. It says, this is the evolution formula for making a universe. Nothing plus nothing equals two elements plus time equal nat 92 natural elements plus time. All 
it's like you plus time equal all physical laws and a completely structured universe of galaxies, systems, stars, planets, and moons orbiting in a perfect balance and order. You see, and hey, that's um, hey, that's BS. It says proportionally through the uh, let me see. I'm gonna get in uh and uh damn I ain't put that Romans one on her. Nah, it's right here. This Romans one and verse nineteen it says, Because that which may be known of the most highest manifest in them, for God have showed it unto them. It says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You see, and we know that the Heavenly Father, he is um, through what we see. You see, we see the uh, the natures of, of, of living creatures. We see how the, the body is set up, the different um, uh, complications of the, of the body, how complex and how um, structured it is that uh, it, it proves that there is a higher power. And uh, through the uh, apostles and elders, through the uh, shepherds that the Lord have set up, we are able to identify that higher, that higher power, which is Yahweh. You see, it says because that they knew it's like it because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools and they Esau Edom. He does all this studying and he does all this and that. But yet he cannot come to the conclusion that Yahweh he is. You see. It says, um, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You see, and uh, he got so smart in his own conceits that ultimately a uh, he's really a a, a a a fake smart individual, so to say. <laughs> you know, he make it look good, so to say. He could put on that booty face, that collar, and spew a bunch of madness. And to a uh, unlearned individual, they, it'll seem like he's smart, but really is uh, foolishness. You see, and it's gonna go on and continue. But it says, um, ver. Uh, <laughs> chapter uh, back in that uh, first part it says two this is the evolution formula for making life it says dirt plus water plus time equals living creatures it says evolutionists theorize that above that the above two formulas can enable everything about us to make itself with the exception of man-made things such as automobiles or buildings so essentially um with dirt plus water plus time and you will equal li uh, living creatures essentially what he just said was that a Okay, say evolution happened. Why didn't cars evolute or evolve from something? Why didn't a building evolute to something? You know, which is a contradiction. And then the scriptures say that there is no truth, that there is no lie of a truth, roughly paraphrasing. This first John one. It's like in 1 John 2 and verse 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it and no lies of the truth. Here it is. It's all type of bones and gray areas when you get down to these uh, scientific theories and so forth. But it says um, complicated things such as wooden boxes with nails in them require thought, intelligence and careful workmanship. And hey, the scriptures tell us that hey, the Lord, um, he sends wisdom from above and we're able to... Um, basically make these things you know it says um but everything else about us in nature such as hummingbirds and a human eye is declared to be the result of accidental mishaps random confusion and time you will not even need raw materials to begin with they make themselves too and the scriptures tell us that um before he created anything he thought about it uh I think it might be in Soraka Wisdom of Solomon 6 or 2nd Andrew 6 Air Blue I should not fail. It's a lie here.
I think it's in Proverbs. It might be Proverbs 6. This shit is fucking madness, man. Uh, that's cool. I, I can't fit. Slip me. Yeah, it slipped me. Yeah, it slipped me right now. But it tell you basically that before you, how would create anything? He thought about everything. You know, he created Yahweh Shah and hey, Yahweh Shah, he created everything that is for his purposes. But it says, um, going back to the little article, it says, how did all this nonsense get started? We will begin the paper, this paperback with a brief overview of, of the modern histor history of evolution in theory. It says, but let us not forget, though it may be nonsensical, evolutionary theory has been greatly, has greatly affected and damaged mankind in the 20th century. Oh, my God. It says, we will continue to let this happen now that we are in the 21st century. The social and moral impact that evolution concert, concepts have had on the modern world has been terrific. And the scriptures tell you that what a fear of the Lord is, it drives away sins. But if you tell the people that God doesn't exist, that, that holds them to um, no reverence, no fear fearful respect for the heavenly father therefore sin and iniquity abound which is a corruption this first corinthians 3 and 18 it says let no man deceive himself if any man among you seeming to be wise in this world let him become a fool that he may be wise because hey when you're born you come up learning what esau even the sober claim white man the devil the deceiver wants you to know he fills you with a bunch of empty vanities that don't profit you you know so coming into this knowledge you have to be as a babe so like it you had to become a babe and desire that sincere milk of the word. You see, and be weaned off the true knowledge, wisdom, understanding, the true science, the true knowing. It's like, which is this word? That shit folly, man. It said, how did all this, it's like, this is going back to 1 Corinthians 3 and 19. It says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And they, even in their own doctrines, their own teachings, they contradict themselves. You see, they, their own people um, speak out against them. Psalm 64, their own tongue shall fall against itself. And one thing that I want to mention as well is uh, you got this guy, uh, Darwinism, the, uh, that, that, that formed that uh, doctrine, you know. But um, do, they mentioned um, a certain type of scientist called a creationist. And before it was all these theories and all uh, atheist scientific guys. And guys that were, you know, you read more in this story, they tell you that these guys was um, conjuring up spirits, you know, working with deceiving spirits to, to get these doctrines, so to say. But before this, their scientists in like the 1700s, 1600s, they were creationists, meaning they believed that there was a higher power. They believed in science, but from their science, it, it related back to a higher power, a higher intelligence. But uh, lately, <laughs> within the last uh, century, century and a half, it's been more of a shift of a... Uh, are more of these atheist um, scientific guys for the ultimately for the uh, reason of rebellion, rebelling against the Heavenly Father. It says, um, verse 20, and again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. And ultimately, everything that they spew out when you continue reading it is vanity. You see, it says morality and ethical standards have been greatly reduced. Children and youth are taught in school that they are an advanced level of animals and there are no moral principles. Since they are just animals, they should do whatever they want. Personal survival and success will come only by rivalry, strife, and stepping on others. And that's an Edomite mindset. You see? He, he comes with that uh, survival of the fittest, that BS. You see? It says, here's a brief overview of, of some of the people and events in a history of modern evolution theory, but it's only a glimpse. Much more will be found as you read further in this paperback, and it's all fascinating reading. It says only a few items are listed in this chapter, but they are enough to provide you a nice entry point to the rest of this paperback. Keep in mind that, well, I'm going to just skip that part. It's not necessary. This um, 18th and 19th century scientist, it says prior to the middle of the 1800s, scientists were researchers who firmly believed that all nature was made by a master designer. And they, the scriptures refer to that master designer as Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, you see. It says, those pioneers who laid the foundation of modern sciences, science were creationists. They were men of giant intellect who struggled against great odds and carrying on their work. They were hardworking researchers. 
It says, in contrast, the philosophers sat around hardly stirring <laughs> from their armchairs and theorized about everything while scientists ignoring them kept at their work. It says, but a change came about in 19th century when the philosophers tried to gain control of scientific endeavor and suppress research and findings that would be unfavorable to their theories. Today, evolutionists uh, vigorously defend the unscientific theories they thought up over a century ago. So hey, it started with creationalists and then you had these uh, la later on philosophers, uh, theorists that came back and uh, basically <laughs> started to uh, refute the um, creationalists, their thoughts, the ones that believed in a higher power orchestrating everything, a uh, divine being that created everything, right? But hey, the scriptures refer to that um, master designer as the heavenly father, the author of beauty. This wisdom of Solomon 13 and verse 1, it says, Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God and cannot out of the good things that are seen know him that he is. You see, and we mentioned a few of them, the uh, nature of, of living things, the, the, the body systems, the different systems in the body, the brain, a, a, how everything works in a, in a synergy is all evidence of the Heavenly Father. It says, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master. You see, so considering uh, the stars, the moon, the sun, the humans, the, the animals, the insects, they didn't consider the, the Heavenly Father. They didn't acknowledge him. Say, all oh, these things were created by the Heavenly Father. It says, but deem me the fire or wind or swift air or the circle of stars or violent water or lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. And a lot of this BS that these scientists come with, a Ecclesiastes, I believe one, it says there is no new thing under the sun. It's all recycled myths that ultimately go back to Samaria. You see, I go back to ancient Babylon and so forth. It's just recycled and returned and, and, and that age is um lexicon if that's a word you uh what they say you know the words they use and then when you read further on and tell you that um the some of the these theorists they said that uh the earth came from the sun and it came from a, a chunk of the sun and just made but hey, the scriptures they acknowledged it way before it says but deem the fire or wind or swift air or the circle of stars or violent waters or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world they accredit the things that are seen to the things that are seen they accredit the, the, the hey, humans and, and this beautiful earth to the, to, the, to the star. But the scriptures tell you that hey, they are in order. Sirach, I believe, like 44, like you get in 40s in Sirach. Talk about how all these things are in order of the Heavenly Father um, doing his commandment. It said, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty have created them, you see. And people get... People uh, worship the things that are seen because, hey, they are beautiful. But, hey, you got to um, give that credit to the Heavenly Father. Hey, how much more greater is he that made the, these beautiful sights that we see? Right. It says, but if they were astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them. For by greatness, by the greatness and beauty of the creatures, proportionally believe the maker of them is seen. And you can't just look at the earth and look at the moon and look at the stars and look at the universe and say, oh, this just happened off of explosion. No, you have to accredit that to the Heavenly Father, which a created them. And they, even all scientists, as we mentioned before, it comes a point in their work where a, they become Christians because they see all oh, shit. Something is um, controlling these. These are listening. These are being governed by something. You see? When you break down and go into the atoms and you go into uh, different cellular parts of the body and you see how they um, how they're, they basically are in command. They're, they're, um, they're playing a role. So Rock 18 says that everything's obedient to his will. It says, verse 6, But yet for this they are less to be blamed, for they peradventure err, seeking the most high and desires to find him. For being conversant in his works, they search him diligently and believe their sight because the things that are beautiful, it's like because the things that because the things are beautiful that are seen, how be it, neither are they to be pardoned. For if they were able to know so much and he try and say he knows this, he knows that it says that they could aim at the world. How did they not soon find her? It's like how did they not sooner find out the Lord thereof? So you're so smart and you can see all these things. You know so much. How haven't you acknowledged Yahweh and Yahweh Shai? You see, but going back to the article, it says, um, 
It says he argued the kind of carefully designed structures we see in the living world point clearly to a designer. Wisdom Psalm 13, Romans 1. It says if we see a watch, we know that it had a designer and a maker. It would be foolish to imagine that it made itself. Same thing with humans. Same things with this earth. Same things with the goodly things that we are seeing. It didn't just pop here. No, the Heavenly Father gave his decree. It says all about us in the world of nature and all over our heads at night is a universe of stars. We can ignore or ridicule that it's like what it is there is. It's like what it what is there or say it is all made of itself. But our scoffing does not change the reality of the situation. A leading atheist, atheistic science, science, scientist of our time, Fred Hoyne, wrote that although it was not difficult to disprove Darwinism, what Paley had to say appeared likely to be unanswerable. It said Freud, Hoy, and Chadwick Rama. It says it was a remarkable fact that the basis of evolution theory was disproven by seven scientific researchers before Charles Darwin first published the theory. And it goes in on different researchers disproving it. And we just hit this one. It says Carl Lynn was a scientist who classified immense numbers of living organisms. An earnest creationist, he clearly saw that there were no halfway species. All plants and animals species were definite categories separate from one from another and the scriptures back this up well he gets it from the scriptures all wisdom is from the heavenly father this first corinthians 15 and verse 38 it says but god gives for the body as it have pleased him into every seed his own body it says all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beast another flesh of fishes and another flesh of birds there is also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. You see? But point B in verse 39, a hey, all flesh is not the same flesh. This evolution theory says that we all have one common ancestor, whether it be a damn skeleton pod or whatever, or it be a damn ape. Hey, you still have both of these things today. You see? It says, going back to the article, it says, various variation was possible within a species and there were many subspecies, but there were no crossovers from one spe species to another. And it says that the Heavenly Father, he, has a multi he created multiple kinds of things. And even within those multiple beings and things that he created, he, he has a variety. You see? The Heavenly Father ain't plain, man. <laughs> it says he's the author of beauty. It says, but there were no crossovers from one species to another. You see? Uh, and that was as much as I uh, got through thus far reading. We'll end off with this Hebrews 11. It's Hebrews 11. One, it says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, it says, for by it, the elders obtain a good report. It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the Most High. The word of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It's like it's Yahweh Shai. He created Yahweh. It's like Yahweh created Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai created the, uh, the first was the elect. And the elect governing body created everything that there is. It says, through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of the Most High, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You see, in a, the Heavenly Father, a, he leaves enough um, proof of his existence, 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 though he need not to, you know, he don't need to, as we already know through faith he is, but a, we know for sure of a surety that he is through a, a what we see, the prophecies that he declared from from of ancient times, and his word is it is tried seven times, and it is pure. You see, when you go into the scriptures, it literally breaks down all this BS malarkey that you saw in the the devil, the anti messiah, <laughs> one of the anti messiahs, the chief adversary of the heavenly father. Um, he, he he rules contrary to him and everything that he. That the Heavenly Father deemed as a good and lawful and true. Esau eat him, he does the exact opposite. You see? So just sum it up, man. This whole um evolution theory, it was nothing but a, a, a boast against the Heavenly Father to try and disprove him, to sway the people into believing in to into to, to not believing in the Heavenly Father. But hey, the Heavenly Father is proportionally seen through the things which are seen. Though when this was an edifying lesson called Halayim La, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Kurash, the bond to the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone. Salutations to all that I can push to wherever you say to a charity. Shalom, Barakatham, Wa Baba, Baal, Kwame, Ashala, Shalom.